For some people, Google means you never get redemption. For his entire adult life, Zach Wisniewski's name has been linked to a criminal accusation that never led to charges. Today, newsrooms are reckoning with their roles in the information age. Naomi Coles takes us behind the scenes of how we are reevaluating our own responsibilities to the public. So we start with team building. Today, Zachary Wisniewski is a teacher. We do a lot of mindfulness stuff. In 2017, he was a teenager with a drug addiction. Unfortunately, um, it actually started started in the boarding school. They sexually assaulted me. They tortured children. They... What he never was was a pimp. That's a little bit about nutrition. But today, while he's here at the Justine Organization in Madison, a lot of schoolwork that comes with it, teaching others how to get their lives on track, that's how the internet remembers him. And by internet, I mean news articles, including our own, all tracing back to this Stoughton Police press release. It named three people, including Zach, in a drug and prostitution investigation. Zach himself wasn't accused of prostitution and says he never did it, but using his name meant he was connected. Plus, prostitution charges never materialized for anyone named, only low-level drug crimes. For Zach, that was selling $5 Xanax pills to feed his own addiction. It was always Xanax. That was the hardest drug I ever went from. I started with um, weed. For a little while after serving a nine-month jail sentence for the drugs, with the articles up connecting him to other uncharged crimes, he almost gave up. I had all these people like, well, you're a kingpin, you're a pimp, you're this, you're that. And I'm like, dang, maybe I am, you know? Like, I guess maybe I am, because that's what everyone else says I am. And so it was hard. It was really hard. Like, it was almost like identity crisis for a while. I asked the detective about the case. He believes prostitution was happening at the apartment, but the DA chose not to charge it. Today, there is no charge or conviction for the others who have since passed away. It should be innocent until proven guilty, not proven, or not guilty until proven innocent. For Zach, despite no charge or accusation, when you Google his name today, that's how the internet remembers him. You can't put the genie back in the bottle. Once somebody's name is out there, especially in the age of the internet, you can't put it back in. That's Lane Kimball, my boss. He's talking about a policy we've implemented within the past year. With a few exceptions for public officials or public safety concerns, we no longer name suspects before they've been formally charged with the crime. The policy essentially is really forcing yourself to take a paradigm shift and say, instead of approaching a story going, why shouldn't we identify this person who is accused by police or by people of some sort of crime? And basically just doing a 180 and saying, why should we identify this? Under this policy, Zach and the others would not have been named back in 2017. That's why we removed the article at his request. But this issue is far larger than this one clear-cut case. How does the media's responsibility of informing the public evolve in a world of Google where people whose lives have moved on can never move on from old mistakes? There's a lot of gray area. There's no doubt about that. Uh, we can definitely improve on it, um, but I think we're making concerted steps, but boy, we and pretty much any newsroom has a long ways to go. We have trust building to do in news. Kathleen Culver directs the University of Wisconsin Center for Journalism Ethics. Across the country, particularly in the wake of George Floyd's murder, she says newsrooms are reevaluating how people are named and when old articles get taken down. A few major newspapers, like the Boston Globe and Salt Lake Tribune, now have processes in place where people can request old articles be evaluated for removal. Not just dealing with where we're headed from here, but how perhaps we write past wrongs. It was a big battle trying to get people to understand that that's not who I am, that's not me. Here we talk about weight. Thanks to the second chances the Justine organization offered, Zach left that life behind, yet it still dogs him. He's honest about his drug past, and people generally don't mind it until they Google him and see the connection to prostitution. Like, housing is still the hardest thing for me. During COVID, a potential new roommate was fine with the drug history, but then... He then looks me up on Google, sees the articles, and then the next day was like, here, I need you to give your money back. I need you to leave. Like, I can't have you living here. Zach's come to peace with a lot of this. Okay. People who know him really know better. Drug and now he's taking taking back his story here on the news where it began. I did stuff wrong, but I think everything leads to a, like, a good place and everything happens for a reason. And if I hadn't done those things, I wouldn't have ended up here and I wouldn't have been able to change other people's lives. 
We want to make sure we're being transparent with you, our viewers, about how we report the news. That's the goal of this story, and it's why I want you to join me this Sunday on For the Record, that's after Face the Nation, for a longer conversation with Kathleen Culver about how some newsrooms are evolving their policies to meet the moment. A great story, an important conversation for newsrooms. Should be everywhere. And if you, like Zach, have a good reason to believe an old article naming you should be taken down, head online to channel3000.com, and we have outlined the circumstances where we will consider taking an article down and you can see if your request would fit the bill.